Hey guys, my name is Pixie, and today we're going to make the Hangman game. If you've never played this game, it's kind of messed up. <laughs> the executioner picks a word. So if the word is apple, you draw five dashes to indicate the length of the word and a little stick board. Then the player guesses one letter at a time to reveal the word. Each time the player guesses wrong, the executioner draws a body part. So the goal is to guess the word correctly, but if the player keeps guessing wrong, then you essentially murder this little stick figure man because he can't spell which is terrible, but it's still a fun game and it makes for a fun tutorial, so let's get started. First off, let's jot down some words in Notepad. I've already written a few. Each word is separated by a comma and the last word does not have a comma. You can use these words or whatever words you want. We could use an easy, medium, or hard mode, but for simplicity's sake, we just have one list of easy words and the longest word is 10 characters in length. The design will be fairly simple. You probably guessed we'll be using some images for the little man, but we also need to make an image for the dashes. I've created an image that is 100 pixels wide by 10 pixels tall. It's just a little white line that will represent my dash. It's nothing fancy, but it is important to note that I've left a little padding in between each letter and also a little padding between the chosen letter and the dash. My background is pretty simple also. It's just a somber looking hill with some birds. When you're playing Hangman in real life, you usually start with the wooden board. In this case, we're using a tree branch. When the player gets a letter wrong, you typically draw a head, so that's exactly what I've done. I just drew a little circle. It's not even a perfect circle. The player answers wrong again, and I draw a body. Wrong again, draw an arm. Wrong again, draw another arm, then a leg, then another leg. You can go into as much or as little detail as you want, but I've chosen to give the player six chances to answer correctly until it's game over. So that means I need to draw six different body parts. I save these images as if I'm drawing them in real life, playing Hangman, and I'm going to number them six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Each of the images have a transparent background and are 324 pixels wide by 300 pixels tall. I'm also going to create two more images, one image that says you win and one image that says you lose. And you'll be able to take a closer look at these images if you decide to download the project from the Appy Builder community. So pre-design is finished, let's upload our images to Appy Builder and get started on the design view. I'm going to design a little bit out of order, so bear with me. Start by setting the screen alignment to center center. I'm going to force screen orientation to portrait, hide the status bar and the title bar, then check the option for scrollable. This will help as we're designing, but we won't keep the scrollable option for the final build. Drag a horizontal arrangement onto the screen named middle. Set the alignments to center center, no background color, height is automatic and width is 90%. We've already established that the longest word in the list is 10 characters in length. So we know we need 10 labels, but we also need 10 vertical arrangements and 10 images in order to make this look good. Start with the first letter, add a vertical arrangement, then place a label inside the arrangement and an image below the label. Change the text of the label to a period. Drag another vertical arrangement onto the screen. Inside the arrangement, add a label and an image. Change the text of the label to a period. Continue this pattern until you have 10 vertical arrangements, 10 labels, and 10 images. When you're finished, click on vertical arrangement one. Change the horizontal alignment to center and keep the vertical alignment at top. Click on vertical arrangement two. Change the horizontal alignment to center. Click on vertical arrangement three. Change the horizontal alignment to center. And you can probably guess that you'll do the same for each of the vertical alignments. So basically you're keeping all of the default properties for these components. The only change you're making is setting the horizontal alignment to center for the vertical arrangements. This just centers the label and image evenly inside of each arrangement. We've changed the text of each label to a period, but it really doesn't matter what the default text is for any of these labels. The images are also left blank. Don't make any changes to the images. Okay, so the middle part is done. Next, drag two vertical arrangements onto the screen. Call the first one game over and the second one game. Set game over alignments to center center, change the background to none, and the width and height to fill parent. Drag two labels and two image components inside of game over. The first label is named label word. I'm just gonna change the text to display the word. And the next label is named data word. I'm gonna make this bold size 30, set the text color to dark gray, and type whatever you want into the text field. I'm just gonna write result as the default text. The first image is named P0, and the picture is set to invisible.png. This is the same invisible padding image we've been using for most of the tutorials. 
The second image is named Image Game Over. Set the height to automatic and set the width to fill parent. You don't need to set a default picture here. We'll load either the win or the lose image based on whether the player wins or loses. So the game over section is done, but we don't want to see it when the game starts. So click on game over and uncheck the visible option to hide it from the view. Now let's work on the game container. The game alignment is center center, no background, and fill parent for both the width and height. Drag a label inside of the game container. This will be our test label, so it doesn't have to look fancy at all. You can make it look however you want. Grab a horizontal arrangement and place it inside of game, name this top. Underneath top, add an image component named image hangman. Next, select middle and carefully drag it below image hangman. Lastly, drag a vertical arrangement below middle and name it bottom. Let's start with the top section. Set the alignments to center center, no background color, height is 75 pixels and width is 90%. Within top, add a label, text box, and a button. Call these label, enter letter, user input, and submit. Style these however you'd like. I've chosen to make the label bold, size 14, and color dark gray, with the text color set to enter a letter. The user input font size is 20, width is 50 pixels, hint is the letter A, text alignment center, and the text color is cyan dark. Normally, I don't leave default buttons, but because the theme for this example is kind of dark, I'm going to leave all of the defaults on the button and just change the text to submit. The top section is now complete. Click on Image Hangman, keep the height at automatic, set the width to fill parent, and the default image to hang 6.png. This should be the picture of the tree branch, and we shouldn't see the little man at all. We've already finished the middle section, so click on Bottom. Set alignments to center center, no background color, height is 75 pixels, and width is 90%. Drag two labels inside the bottom container. Call the first one label letters and the second data letters. I'm gonna style label letters as bold, font size 16, light gray as the color, and I'll type wrong letters as the text. The style for data letters is font size 26, I'm going to change the font type to Riffic, which is a cute cartoony type of font, and the width is fill parent. Text alignment is center, and I'm leaving the text completely blank. Lastly, add a sound component. You can rename it if you want to. I'm going to call it Effect, and you can leave the default properties. To finish this design, click on screen one and uncheck scrollable. We just needed that option to help create the design, but we shouldn't need it when we test the app. Okay, so the design is finished. Let's move on to the block section. Start by creating eight global variables. Call these word list, character list, layout list, label list, image list, life total correct, and word. In word list, grab a list from CSV row block and add a blank text block. Copy and paste the words you chose earlier into the text block. Make sure each word is separated by a comma and that there aren't any extra spaces at the beginning or end of these words. The next four variables by default are set to empty lists. Set life total to six. Remember, we're giving the player six chances to guess correctly. Set correct to zero and word to a blank text block. Let's start with the initialize list procedure. This is gonna be the most tedious block, but it's actually very simple. Grab an add items to list block and create 10 items for this list then copy this two more times. I bet you can guess what we're gonna do. The first entry is our layout list. Each of these items will be vertical arrangement one through vertical arrangement 10. We're gonna do the same thing, but with the labels. So add items to global label list, start with label one, end with label 10. Then finish this procedure by adding items to global image list, start with image one and end with image 10. And this is why we started with the middle during the design, so we don't have to rename 30 different components. Now let's set some defaults for these 30 components. Create an initialize screen procedure. Grab a local variable block and call it width. Set width to round middle dot width divided by the length of layout list. Now all three of the lists that we just populated are the same size, so it doesn't matter that we chose layout list. We could have easily chosen label list or image list. Next, we're gonna loop through each of those three lists. Let's start with the layout list. 
If you guys have been watching some of my videos, you know I love the Any Components. They are the best blocks in the world. Grab the Any Component for a vertical arrangement's visibility. The component will be set to item and the value is set to false. You can copy and paste this block and use the little drop down button to change visible to width. The component is still item and the value is width. Copy this block again, change the drop down to height, and I'm going to change the value to twice that of the width. So what we're doing is looping through every single vertical arrangement that's in our layout list. When we start the game, all of those arrangements will be invisible and they'll also be given a width and height based on the width of the middle section, which is set to 90% of the screen's width. And we use this method so we don't have to change all of the properties in the design view 10 times. Because what if we run the app and we absolutely hate the way that looks? Then we'd have to go back into design view and make those changes 10 more times. That's crazy. So code smarter, not harder. Now we're going to set some defaults for our label list. Grab any label.txt. The component is item and the default value is a blank text block. Copy and paste that block three more times. Change the font size to 20. Change the text color to white. And set the font custom typeface to rific.ttf. The image list is the easiest one. Grab any image.picture and set it to background letter.png. When the screen starts, we need to initialize our lists and initialize those screen defaults. So now if we need to make changes, we can come back to our initialize screen procedure and say, hey, I don't like font size 20 on these labels, or I don't like the color white, or maybe you hate this font, or maybe you wanna change the way that little dash looks under each letter. You make those changes here one time instead of 10 different times in design view. Grab another procedure and name it pick word. Set global word to pick a random item in the word list. Now we leap through each character in the word. You can keep the default variable number, but I like changing the loop variable to I. We'll start with the first letter in the word and loop until we've reached the last letter in the word. And we'll look at each letter one at a time. Grab any vertical arrangement dot visible component. The component will be set to the current index in the layout list. So let's say the app picks a random word in our word list and chooses the word arcade. Arcade is six letters in length, so this loop will only show the first six vertical arrangements. Remember, we made 10, so the other four will be hidden from view during this round. Once the loop has finished, set the text for data word to the global variable word. We can also set the test label to word because remember data word is in the game over container so the player won't see that word until he or she wins or loses the game. But we want to also see what the word is while we're testing. So when you build your project, you want to delete this block. Add the pick word procedure to the screen's initialize event. Next, create three procedures. The first is called sound effect with an argument named type. The second is decrease life, and the third is game over with an argument named type. Grab a local variable named file and set its default to blank. If the type equals good, then set file to correct.wave. Otherwise, if the type is bad, set the file to incorrect.wave. We'll set the effect source to file and then play the source file. In the decrease life procedure, play the bad sound effect first. Set data letters.txt to display everything in the character list. Now there are a couple ways to display the list entries, but an easy way is to simply exclude the parentheses from the array. And I'd prefer the letters to be in uppercase because it looks cleaner with the chosen font. Next, decrease the life total by one. We start with six, and if the player guesses wrong, we go to five. Then set image hangman's picture based on the value of the global life total. Remember that hangman pictures began with the word hang followed by a number, and we save them as a PNG file. So if we have six chances when the game starts, then we only see the tree branch, which is image hang six PNG. If we guess wrong, we have five more chances, and now we see image hang five PNG. We can keep guessing until we reach zero. If life total equals zero, then we've lost the game. When the game ends, set the game's container's visibility to false and show the game over container. If the type equals win, then set game over picture to game over win.png. Otherwise, set game over picture to game over lose.png. Okay, so we're almost done. The user will enter a letter and hit the submit button. So let's call the submit.click event and force hide the keyboard. 
we need to make sure the user actually entered something into the text box. If the text box is empty, we'll play a sound effect. We won't penalize the user if they accidentally hit the submit button, but that sound effect will help alert the user that they made a mistake. If the user input is not empty, we'll create three local variables called user input character, character, and incorrect. The first variable is going to accept only one letter. So if the user enters in the letter B, then great, job well done. But if the user enters the word apple into the text box, then the app will only count the first letter in apple, which is A. The second variable default is a blank text box and the default for the third variable is zero. Now we need another checkpoint. If the user input character is in the character list, play the bad sound effect. The character list is populated when the user guesses wrong. Remember when you're playing Hangman, the executioner keeps track of the letters you guessed wrong, and it doesn't count against you if you accidentally say the same letter twice. Otherwise, if the user enters a valid letter, then we loop through the word, starting with the first letter in the chosen word. Set local variable character to the current letter in the loop. If the user entered a letter that is the same letter as character, then play the good sound effect. Change the label to the current index in the label list and display the user input on that label as an uppercase letter. If those letters match, then increment correct by one. If correct equals the length of the word, then the user wins the game. Otherwise, if the user input doesn't match any of the letters in the chosen word, then increment incorrect by one. At the end of the loop, check if incorrect equals the length of the word. If so, add the user input to the character list and decrease life. To finish the event, set the user input to blank. So let's recap with an example. The game starts, a random word is chosen, and that word is arcade. The user cannot see that word. Instead, the user sees six dashes and a tree branch. The user enters the letter A and hits the submit button. The first checkpoint is to see if the user entered something. The user entered the letter A, so checkpoint passed. The second checkpoint is to see if that letter was already guessed earlier. It wasn't guessed earlier because the game just started, so checkpoint passed. Now the app says, okay, we've got the letter A and we've got the word arcade. Does A equal A? Well, it sure does. So label one dot text is set to A and correct equals one. Move on to the next letter R. Does R equal A? Nope. Does C equal A? No. Does A equal A? Yes. So label five dot text is set to A and correct equals two. Does D equal A? No. Does E equal A? No. Then the user will pick another letter and the submit button click event will start again. So let's run the app and see this in action. The game has started and my test label shows that the randomly selected word is cough. As the player, I won't see this word, so I'm gonna pretend that I don't know what the word is and start entering any letter. I enter the letter T and the bad sound effect plays because there's no T in the word cough. A head has been drawn onto the screen and T has been added to the character list, which appears in the label named data letters. Let's enter T again and the bad sound effect plays. Remember that one of the checkpoints was to see if the letter was already entered previously and it was. So we won't penalize the user for accidentally entering the same letter twice. At this time, there's no way to set a max length for a text box. So the user can enter anything they want into this text box. But we did add a check that makes sure that if this happens, the app only accepts the first letter that was entered. So I'll type in the word hello890 and hit submit. The app only counts the first letter entered, which is the letter H. And that just happens to be one of the letters in the word. So the good sound effect plays and H is added to label five. The user might be tempted to enter an emoji, number, or special character, and they can do that, but it will count against them if they do, because a smiley face is not a letter. You can see as I keep entering the wrong letters, more of the little man appears under the tree until I lose the game and the little man dies. The word is revealed to the user in the game over container, which is what we're seeing now. And the image we see will either be game over win or game over lose based on whether the user wins or loses the game. Time to wrap this up with some improvements. Two things you might have noticed right off the bat. The most obvious is that when the game ends, it just ends. You have to restart the app. So ideally, you'd want to add a reset button or add a menu that allows the user to select a word difficulty. Also, we checked for duplicate wrong letters, but we didn't check for duplicate correct letters. Each time the user enters a letter correctly, the correct variable is incremented. So if the word is castle and the user enters C, then correct equals one. 
If the user enters C again, you won't see a change on the screen, but correct will now equal two, which means the user can enter C six times and win the game. This is what we call an exploit, something that was overlooked by the devs and can be used to cheat. So you always wanna catch things like that. Your challenge for this example is to fix the exploit. Lastly, Hangman is a fun game, but think about how you can use these concepts in an education app, like preparing students for a spelling bee. The difficulty for an app like that could be based on grade level. You could check with your school district for a list of words that are used every year and really make an app that could benefit local students. Check out the Appy Builder community where you can discuss projects you're working on, stay up to date on current topics, and access tutorials created by community members. Alrighty guys and gals, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye!